injection, stamping, surface finishing, and assembling. All the company key processes are managed in house. Delhi has already stepped into the new automation generation, offering production with greater efficiency and stability. Each manufacturing step, from the raw material reception to the final product assembly, is strictly checked by the quality department, making sure every Delhi product bought by the consumer shows our quality dedication. Delhi today offers one of the widest product selections, covering 12 major categories, focusing on both office and school markets. We provide our customers with tailored logistic solutions, offering quick delivery service, great after-sale systems, flexibility by helping stock management, and offering flexible MOQs. From Dubai to Moscow, from Mumbai to Warsaw, from Chicago to Tokyo, our ambition is to touch worldwide office and school consumers. To achieve that mission, we also rely on our distributors' networks, covering more than 100 countries. With the help of our partners, we make sure that Delhi products and branding are well adapted to local markets. This is how we make sure that we fulfill the expectation of each and every Delhi consumer all around the world. Delhi's mission is to satisfy global consumers, top quality, reliable, innovative and friendly products. Together with partners sharing the same beliefs, our purpose is to make office and school consumer life easier throughout the world. Delhi Office, your best office mate. Delhi School, so easy, so Delhi. Hi, I'm Mel, and I am Choosy. My ultimate skin goal is gusto kong mag-even out ang skin tone ko. Hi, my name is Gian Enwada. My skin goals are to become whiter, fairer, healthier, and younger.
it really shows na yung skin ko ngayon mas moisturized, mas glowing, and mas healthy. Thanks to Glutasy, I got my skin tone back. Thank you so much, Glutasy. As COVID-19 cases continue to arise all over the world and enhanced community quarantine stops most of business transactions, struggles such as keeping up with business process, continuing to equip employees to be productive, and complying with government for taxes and financial reporting make it more difficult for an organization to endure the current crisis. But how can you keep up? The answer is flexibility. You don't need to be a superhero to be flexible. Just the right mindset, a lot of hard work, and a powerful tool. Let your business be empowered. Manage your sales, purchases, and inventory online. Unleash the productivity of your employees even if they are at home. Start to have a future-proof business right now. For more details about Q&A Accounting System Online, call us at 0917-710-4722 or email us at sales at qne.com.ph. 30% discount will be given as our help to all the businesses within the Philippines. Stay at home and stay safe. Every coffee needs a lotus. What's the secret to beauty's beauty? Langis. Ito ba lahat ang gamit mo? Ay hindi. Isa lang ang gamit ko for all. Moringa O2 Therapy Oil. Hindi lang malunggay. Meron ding olive oil and omega from sunflower oil. This therapy oil helps relieve my dry and irritated skin. It helps lighten my scars and stretch marks. It helps make my hair young and healthy. This is our beauty secret. Sana all. Sana all. <laughs>
perfect smoothness of writing. Which stapler to optimize efforts? How to organize papers and files in folders? The product that catches the consumer's eye. The right color tone to express feelings. Our consumer's needs are at the heart of every Dali product development, starting from the product concept and design. To achieve it, Dali has global design teams dedicated on all product aesthetic and functional requirements. From Tokyo to Stuttgart, our purpose is to be connected to worldwide trends and apply them in our product designs. Every product is developed in-house and is the result of deep design research, highlighting our reliability, know-how, quality and efficiency for office products, focusing on the attraction, the user-friendliness and the safety for our school offer. Matching Dali's different visual identities. This is how Dali has developed product for 30 years. This is what makes a world leader. Another key reason for Dali's worldwide success is our manufacturing know-how and large-scale production capacity. Starting from tooling, injection, stamping, surface finishing and assembling, all the company key processes are managed in-house. Dali has already stepped into the new automation generation, offering production with greater efficiency and stability. Each manufacturing step, from the raw material reception to the final product assembly, is strictly checked by the quality department, making sure every Delhi product bought by the consumer shows our quality dedication. Delhi today offers one of the widest product selections, covering 12 major categories, focusing on both office and school markets. We provide our customers with tailored logistic solutions, offering quick delivery service, great after-sale systems, flexibility by helping stock management, and offering flexible MOQs. From Dubai to Moscow, from Mumbai to Warsaw, from Chicago to Tokyo, our ambition is to touch worldwide office and school consumers. To achieve that mission, we also rely on our distributors' networks, covering more than 100 countries. With the help of our partners, we make sure that Delhi products and branding are well adapted to local markets. This is how we make sure that we fulfill the expectation of each and every Delhi consumer all around the world. Delhi's mission is to satisfy global consumers top quality, reliable, innovative and friendly products. Together with partners sharing the same beliefs, our purpose is to make office and school consumer life easier throughout the world. Delhi Office, your best office mate. Delhi School, so easy, so Delhi.
Hi, I'm Mel, and I am Choosy. My ultimate skin goal is gusto kong mag-even out ang skin tone ko. Hi, my name is Gian Enwada. My skin goals are to become whiter, fairer, healthier, and younger. It really shows na yung skin ko ngayon mas moisturized, mas glowing, and mas healthy. Thanks to Glutasy, I got my skin tone back. Thank you so much, Glutasy. As COVID-19 cases continue to arise all over the world and enhanced community quarantine stops most of business transactions, struggles such as keeping up with business process, continuing to equip employees to be productive, and complying with government for taxes and financial reporting make it more difficult for an organization to endure the current crisis. But how can you keep up? The answer is flexibility. You don't need to be a superhero to be flexible. Just the right mindset, a lot of hard work, and a powerful tool. Let your business be empowered. Manage your sales, purchases, and inventory online. Unleash the productivity of your employees even if they are at home. Start to have a future-proof business right now. For more details about q and &E Accounting System Online, call us at 0917-710-4722 or email us at sales at qne.com.ph. 30% discount will be given as our help to all the businesses within the Philippines. Stay at home and stay safe. Every coffee needs a lotus. What's the secret to beauty's beauty? Langis. Ito ba lahat ang gamit mo? Ay hindi. Isa lang ang gamit ko for all. Moringa O2 Therapy Oil. Hindi lang malunggay. Meron ding olive oil and omega from sunflower oil. This therapy oil helps relieve my dry and irritated skin. It helps lighten my scars and stretch marks. It helps make my hair young and healthy. This is our beauty secret. Sana all. Sana all. <laughs>
the perfect smoothness of writing. Which stapler to optimize efforts? How to organize papers and files in folders? The product that catches the consumer's eye. The right color tone to express feelings. Our consumer's needs are at the heart of every DALI product development, starting from the product concept and design. To achieve it, DALI has global design teams dedicated on all product aesthetic and functional requirements. From Tokyo to Stuttgart, our purpose is to be connected to worldwide trends and apply them in our product designs. Every product is developed in-house and is the result of deep design research, highlighting our reliability, know-how, quality and efficiency for office products, focusing on the attraction, the user-friendliness and the safety for our school offer. Matching DALI's different visual identities. This is how DALI has developed product for 30 years. This is what makes a world leader. Another key reason for DALI's worldwide success is our manufacturing know-how and large-scale production capacity. Starting from tooling, injection, stamping, surface finishing and assembling, all the company key processes are managed in-house. DALI has already stepped into the new automation generation, offering production with greater efficiency and stability. Each manufacturing step, from the raw material reception to the final product assembly, is strictly checked by the quality department, making sure every DALI product bought by the consumer shows our quality dedication. DALI today offers one of the widest product selections, covering 12 major categories, focusing on both office and school markets. We provide our customers with tailored logistic solutions, offering quick delivery service, great after-sales systems, flexibility by helping stock management, and offering flexible MOQs. From Dubai to Moscow, from Mumbai to Warsaw, from Chicago to Tokyo, our ambition is to touch worldwide office and school consumers. To achieve that mission, we also rely on our distributors' networks, covering more than 100 countries. With the help of our partners, we make sure that Delhi products and branding are well adapted to local markets. This is how we make sure that we fulfill the expectation of each and every Delhi consumer all around the world. Delhi's mission is to satisfy global consumers top quality, reliable, innovative and friendly products. Together with partners sharing the same beliefs, our purpose is to make office and school consumer life easier throughout the world. Delhi Office, your best office mate. Delhi School, so easy, so Delhi.
Hi, I'm Mel, and I am Juicy. My ultimate skin goal is gusto kong mag-even out ang skin tone ko. Hi, my name is Gian and Wanda. My skin goals are to become whiter, fairer, healthier, and younger. It really shows na yung skin ko ngayon mas moisturized, mas glowing, and mas healthy. Thanks to Glutasy, I got my skin tone back. Thank you so much, Glutasy. Okay, and we're live. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to our um, Zoom participants and good afternoon to our FB live viewers. This is Irish Malanda, your host. Welcome to another inspiring and jam-packed e-learning session powered by Ariva Academy. The topic for today is a Lenten season offering entitled The Pursuit of Meaning, Your Spiritual Journey and Faith in times of crisis. This online learning session is designed to enrich one's spiritual journey by focusing on everyday challenges that obstruct one's relationship with God. Using a blend of scripture, personal life experiences, and stories of hope and inspiration. In this live webinar, you will gain a deep understanding and appreciation of God's word and how to incorporate it in our daily lives. Before I introduce our speaker, please allow me to acknowledge our out-of-the-country participants and some few house rules. Thank you for joining us for out-of-the-country participants coming from Malaysia, Italy, United, and United States. And for us to uh, have a smooth flow of our e-learning session, here are the house rules. We will be having a two to three minute break after the presentation of our guest speaker and before we move on to our question and answer. Participants' microphones will be temporarily disabled by the administrator during discussion to avoid interruptions. Questions will be entertained after each topic of the session. For questions and clarifications during the provided time, after each topic, please click the raise button. And please click the raise button for the administrator to enable the microphone for live questions. Questions may also be given via chat. One question at a time will be entertained. For comments and feedback, please scan this QR code and it will be directed to our feedback form. Please send us your feedback and uh, for us to improve our future e-learning sessions. Okay, shall we start? Now I'll be introducing our speaker. Our speaker today is the consultor of CBCP Episcopal Commission on Culture. She is also the provincial supervisor of PDDM Sisters Disciples of the Divine Master 
Philippine, Taiwan, Hong Kong province. A very timely topic during this Holy Week and these trying times as she will discuss about the pursuit of meaning, your spiritual journey and faith in time of crisis. Let's now welcome Sister Anthony Baza. Sister Anthony? Hello, Irish. And good hello. afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. And um, a blessed celebration of the Holy Week. It's already Holy Saturday, and we've been through the Holy Week already. And I would like to anticipate my gratitude to my Arriva family for this opportunity um, to give hope, faith, and love to everyone out there, especially in this time of crisis, especially that the um, enhanced quar uh, community quarantine will be extended up to April 30. So we need something to hold on to. So this is Holy Saturday. And I would like to share something on, uh, where is my, okay. I want to share something, uh, am I seen uh, Irish? Yeah, I have, okay. I am uh, seeing my PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Am I on? Not yet. Not yet. PowerPoint. Oops, sorry about this. We're good. All right. Okay. Well. Is it okay now? Yes, yeah, sister. Okay, we can see your uh, PowerPoint now. Yeah. But let's see. But I can, uh, I can manipulate it. <laughs> Sorry. It does not move from my from my end. Is it moving there? Not yet, sister. But we have a copy. Uh -huh. We have a copy. We can we can just advise us. Oh. But. Uh, Opened at my end, so sorry. Okay. What do I need to be share or what? Sorry. It's okay now. It's okay now. Mm -hmm. It's not moving at my on my end. The the okay. PowerPoint. Just advise us for next slide, sister, so we can move. Okay. So my slide is on the Holy Saturday. Okay, something. Uh, so it, uh, it's, am I on now again? Okay na po yan, sister. Makakontrol niyo na po yan. Ah, okay. So is it at my, at my end na? Okay. Yes, no. yes, sister. Okay. You, can, you can check the slides. Okay, sorry. So something strange is happening today, and um, because it's Holy Saturday, it is uh, an excerpt from one of the ancient homilies read every Holy Saturday um, during the office of when, when we pray the office of the reading. Something strange is happening today, and there is a great silence over all the earth, a great silence and stillness, a great silence because the king sleeps. The earth was in terror and was still because God slept in the flesh and raised up those who were sleeping from the ages. God has died in the flesh and the underworld has trembled. So the world today is at a standstill. Everybody is afraid, insecure, helpless. Power, science, money become nothing in the face of this pandemic, in this, in this global crisis, the coronavirus. 
and even the seat of the Catholic Church feel the crisis. Uh, I quote from Pope Francis during his Urbi at Orbi last March 27, 2020. Actually, Urbi at Orbi, this blessing, um, is given only on special occasions like Easter and December and uh, Christmas. But since we are in a, in, a, in a different situation, in a special situation, our Pope deemed it necessary to give this special blessing. Um, for weeks now, it had been evening, the Pope said, during his homily. Thick darkness has gathered over our squares, our streets, and our cities. It has taken over our lives, filling everything with a deafening silence and a distressing void that stops everything as it passes by. We feel it in the air. We notice it in people's gestures. Their glances keep them away. We find ourselves afraid and lost. So what is a crisis? I've gathered um, information about crisis and I've summarized it into this. A crisis is any event that is going or expected to lead to an unstable and dangerous situation affecting an individual, group, community, or the whole society. And uh, at this moment, it is, uh, it, it is affecting the whole world. That's why it is called pandemic. In medical terms, a crisis is a turning point for better or worse in an acute disease, the crossroads a patient reaches, the point at which one will either take the road to recovery or to death. So our patients, COVID patients, are really experiencing this medical or physical crisis in their life. They do not know what will happen to them. Uh, having COVID-19 nowadays is like a death sentence to one who has it already. And also, it's also a danger to those who are in contact with these people, so you have the contact tracing, as you say. The characteristics of a crisis is, are unexpected and unwanted. They are unexpected and unwanted. Of course, we are not um, ready for this because we are not expecting this to happen. It's just far away when it was in China or Hong Kong, but now it's here in our country already. It creates uncertainty and insecurity. Everybody feels afraid. Of, uh, they fear the uncertain times. They feel insecure. And it is seen as a threat to important goals. It's a difficulty and a burden. A lot of celebrations um, were canceled or postponed because of this. So it has been a threat. And we do not know what to do. We have to be creative in responding to, to difficult situations such as a crisis. The crisis may be, first of all, financial. Because of this uh, pandemic, of this crisis, many are unemployed. There is no business. Only the basic essentials, the necessities in life are, um, are, are needed now. So everything is closed. So there is a crisis financially, both the poor and the rich. Of course, it's obvious that it is a health crisis. Anybody can be... Um, can be attacked by this virus. That's why we are, all of us are asked to be covered, to protect ourselves with face masks and uh, gloves and even sanitize our surroundings and every now and then disinfect. So it is a threat to health. So it's a health crisis also. Relationship. Those who are dying with, uh, with this virus, they are just alone. Their family wants to reach out to them, but they cannot go to them and console their family. And they die alone and have to be cremated uh, within 24 hours. And they don't even get um, the right of funeral, which is in our culture. And um, also the, fam uh, the friends and families don't even have a chance to pay their last respects to those um, who are afflicted by this. Uh, virus, so it's a relationship crisis also. And any, if it's a health, financial um, relationship crisis, it can be a personal crisis. Others are becoming uh, depressed, stressed, and others are even contemplating suicide because they are unsure of what, what will happen to them. They want, they don't want to to in, um, to pass this virus to their family, so they are contemplating of taking their own life. Let's see. Um, escape from all of this. 
environmental. Now we are suddenly um, we are suddenly washing our hands every now and then. We are suddenly concerned about the cleanliness of our surroundings. We suddenly need to, to sanitize, to disinfect. It's an environmental crisis as well. And spiritual. We ask a lot of questions. Why? What? How? Why is this happening to us? Where can we hold on to? Where do we, where do we go now? So this is a spiritual crisis as well. So finding meaning uh, in the crisis of Holy Week, a journey of faith of those who were with Jesus. I will mention some persons in the scriptures who played a role in the journey of Holy Week, how they handled the crisis situations they were in. And we might even find ourselves in each of these persons. It is good to see how we might learn from them what to do and what not to do when we find ourselves in different crises. First is, I know you are very familiar with this character in the scriptures, Judas Iscariot. Last Wednesday, we, uh, we just commemorated what we call the Spy Wednesday because it was last Wednesday when the gospel was all about Judas uh, selling Jesus for 30, silver, uh, 30 pieces of silver. That would be about 25 US dollars. The price of a slave. So um, it was a spy Wednesday because it was the time Judas started to betray Jesus, his friend, his master. And uh, on Holy Thursday, when Jesus washed the feet of the disciples, Jesus already that Judas um, was about to betray him. But it did not stop Jesus to still show his love for Judas. He still washed the feet of, uh, of Judas. And then suddenly the, the virus of Satan entered Judas and, and he never got well. Judas never got well because he does not have enough antibodies. He even wanted to contaminate Jesus by not implementing social distance. He kissed Jesus. The kiss of uh, betrayal, the kiss of a traitor. He was shameless enough to even kiss Jesus because it was night then and we need to point out who Jesus is to the arresting soldiers. And he pointed Jesus. He, it, the sign was to kiss Jesus. He actually, Judas actually regretted what he did and threw away the 30 pieces of silver. But his antibodies were not enough to realize that. The only remedy for his possession, for, for the possession of Satan in his body, for, for this virus, for this contamination, is Jesus himself, whom he betrayed. He has witnessed that Jesus, he has he's witnessed what Jesus has done, the, the many miracles that Jesus has done. He um, heard the preachings of Jesus. He was with him. Jesus even gave him a, a powerful position as the the holder as the treasurer of the group, but he did not really listen to Jesus. He was not really able to internalize the teachings of Jesus. He was not really able to, to see the wonders that he, what, what Jesus has done to all the people by giving sight to the blind or raising Lazarus from the dead. You know, Jesus, the, preoccup the preoccupation of Judas was just money. Judas was in crisis, but he did not see that uh, crisis can be opportunity. Almost, Judas almost saw that he, because he regretted, but he did not trust in the loving forgiveness of Jesus, whom he was with for three years. In Judas, who betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, according to the Gospel of Matthew, the lesson might be of potential destruction the love of money or greed they bring upon a person. Nowadays, many of us can also relate ourselves with Judas. A lot of people are in need and money are also flowing and uh, given to those people in power to distribute this to those who are in need. But we wonder, does it really, do they really reach the people who need them? So, is there a Judas Iscariot in us? Another, um, another character in the Bible whom we are familiar with is St. Peter. 
see you no know, Saint Peter is the one who denied Jesus three times. No? Uh, but he was really following Jesus from the time Jesus was sentenced uh, and Jesus was arrested. Jesus, uh, Peter was already following Jesus, brave enough to follow Jesus even at a distance. As uh, so, uh, Bishop Sokolieta said, Peter was a brave man to follow Jesus and even um, use the sword to protect the Lord from the arresting soldiers. But when Peter was asked by some people if he knew Jesus, he denied Jesus. No, I do not know him. He denied his very friend. He denied his very master. Yes, Peter was brave, but it's just that um, he reached a moment of, fix, of weakness beyond endurance. The Lord knows that we are not bad. The Lord knows what is in our heart. And he also knows that sometimes we are weak and fragile. And But what the difference between Peter and Judas, Peter knows what to do with his crisis. When he denied Jesus three times, the cock crawled and Jesus and Peter wept. If Coach Bam said, it's okay not to be okay, maybe I could add, it's okay to weep if you need to weep, to cry if you need to cry, like Peter. Peter continued to trust in the Lord, even if he failed him by denying him. Even if we cannot forgive ourselves, God still forgives because God's love for us is greater than our greatest sin. God's love is greater than our heart. I remember when my mama died. Um, it was also when mama had my, when my mother has had cancer. It was also a moment of crisis for me because I am the eldest in the in the family, and I just professed my vow. So I asked God a lot of questions like, "Why? Why only now? And why when when I responded to your call? Why?" But during that time, the course of the journey, I also got the answers. I needed my, my religious vows to be strong enough to be with my family and accompany them in this journey. And then when my mother died, uh, during the wake, my, my aunties, my relatives told me, told us, brothers and sisters, we are three in the family and my father, they told us, you, you go to your mother, you, you, you whisper to her your words of forgiveness so that um, it will be easy for her to, to be freed from, from purgatory as we believe. So we have that need. So one, uh, one night when it was my turn to stay awake and be with my mother during the way, I went to her top step and looked at her and tried to recall. Because if you're going to forgive someone, you need to recall the sins that, the sins that um, she has committed. I need to remember the sins that she has, that she has done. I mean, my mother is not perfect. But when I looked at her, my mother was almost smiling. She's just like sleep, sleeping very soon. When I look at the face of my mother in the, in, um, in, in the casket, the memories that came, that flashed into my memory, were not sins of my mother. But the love and care that I have experienced from her, the times when I get sick and she would care for me, the times when I had problems and I can run to her, the times when I needed someone to talk to like a friend, my mother was there. And I did not remember any, any sin that she committed at all. So that time, I also told myself when I was looking at her, that my mother, the remains of my mother, if I, a sinner and unworthy person, could, could not remember the sins of my mother, but only the good things that she has done to me, what more God, who created us, who loves us, who came, the, the, his breath is, our, our breath is God. Yeah. So it gave me consolation that my mother, I, my mother does not need to free, to free her from purgatory. I believe that without 
that reflection. She is now in heaven with God. Because what God remembers is the suffering of my mother, that the love that she that she showed us during her lifetime. And it also consoled me because suddenly I I did not become afraid of death. So going back to Peter in his denial, we learned that a person could be weak, but we just need to go back to the one who loves us first, to the one who forgives us, to the one who, even if we deny him, will not, will not deny us, to whom, even if we are unfaithful, will always be faithful. The disciples who ran away, the friends of Jesus during this time, especially during the arrest, they all ran away, they all escaped, of course, for fear, fear of their life, fear of being arrested, fear of being associated with Jesus, who was accused of being a criminal, fear made the disciples run away. In crisis moments, there are three responsible responses available for us. First is to, to, to uh, first is flight, to flee, to run away, to escape, to escape the situation. Then another one is to fight, to be violent, to be aggressive. And the third one is to face face the situation and make sense out of the situation or face the situation make sense and meaning out of it sometimes we get lost in life or we we divert roads sometimes we do not know where to go and it's okay also to get lost at times it's okay to divert roads what is important is that we know where to go back the disciples ran away and were scattered. But you know what? They all found themselves again together in the outer room where Jesus used to meet them together. They got lost, but they know where to go back. They know where their home is. So they found themselves together then in the upper room waiting for Jesus, trusting that Jesus will fulfill his promise that he will rise again from the dead. Another character in the Bible whom we are very familiar with, especially during Holy Week, is Pontius Pilate. And we usually associate Pontius Pilate with uh, those who have authority or in power, politicians, because Pilate um, was a governor. Um, and uh, during the time of Emperor Tiberius, he was responsible for tax collection, very powerful, managing major land projects such as construction of new buildings. And he was the highest judge in the province. He also commanded an army of auxiliary troops. However, if serious threats were imminent, he, Roman governors would seek support from the higher ranking governor of Syria, which is Pontius Pilate. In other words, he has power. He has power. But facing, being face-to-face uh, -face with Jesus, Pontius Pilate knew deep in his heart that Jesus was innocent. He wanted to release him. Pilate found no case against Jesus. But to appease the crowds that had gathered to watch the scandal that, um, that was a man who was claimed to be king of the Jews, he had Jesus scourged. Baka maawa yung mga tao. Pilate thought that might be enough the people, but people wanted more. They want Jesus crucified and to release Barabbas. And Pilate eventually concedes to the people, <clears throat> and Jesus is condemned to death. But not before Pilate asks for water to wash his hands. It's also um, an act which is very familiar to us of Pontius Pilate. An act to absolve himself from the death and the blood of an innocent person who is Jesus. Jesus. He really believes deep in his heart that he is innocent. Otherwise, he wouldn't wash his hands. In today's pandemic of coronavirus, the washing of hands is a necessity to protect us from the virus. But in this act of Pontius Pilate, we see his paradox. The belief in Jesus' innocence, and yet he lacks the courage to act upon this belief. Despite previously assisting that, asserting that he has power to do so. 
if we recall, if we would recall, he told Jesus, you, would you not tell me anything? You know, I have the power to release you. Why are you so silent? Pilate was a coward. And he did not have the backbone or the balls to stand to what is right and to fight for his principles. Then we have St. John the Beloved. John is a true friend of Jesus. But of course, John has his own weakness. Remember that the mother of James and John was telling Jesus, oh, could you give Jesus, um, could you give my son's position in your kingdom? To, uh, one to sit at your right and the other to sit at your left. And Jesus told the mother of James and John, do you know what you're talking about? Can they drink the cup that I am going to drink? Yes, John has his own witness also, his own ambition. But he stayed with Jesus to kill the end. He did not escape. And eventually, he took the mother of Jesus, who became alone and unaware because um, Mary lost her husband and Mary lost her son. And Jesus told John on the cross, John, behold your mother, son. Behold your mother, mother, behold your son. So from that time on, John took Mary to his home and took, uh, and took care of her as his own mother. So there is also a true friend. Mary and the other woman stood by Jesus. Actually, there are a lot of things that Mary did not understand about his son. Many things that Jesus said or did, Mary was not able to understand it. But she pondered it all in her heart and just believed and trusted in the mission of her son and in her mission also, in the salvation. But of course, even if Mary did not understand everything, she followed the will of God. She also asked questions. She's a very strong woman. And the other woman who were considered um, that time in the Jewish uh, time, the women are marginalized. They are second class. So, but now I remember the frontliners. Some frontliners are experiencing this being marginalized, not uh, accepted by their own by their own family or barangays because they, they might pass on the virus to them. So now they are the new homeless. That's why there, there are a lot of institutions opening their 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 rooms for our frontliners, wherever they are, whether it's the medical field, janitorial field, anybody who would need a home because. They are the new homeless now. And I'm sure we are also familiar with the good thief and Simon of Cyrene. They are the people who really um, do not know Jesus. They are, Jesus is a stranger to them. And maybe their characters are just accident, accidental, but they tell us something also. They tell us also a, a lesson. Even if, um, like the good thief, he believes that he deserves to be crucified on the cross. And he believes that Jesus does not deserve to be crucified on the cross. So that he prayed. It was just like a prayer to Jesus when he talked to Jesus. He told Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And at that moment, Jesus granted his prayer. And now on, you will be with me in paradise. Actually, um, if you look at it logically, the good thief was the first, um, the first one to enter heaven with Jesus, the first one to be canonized by Jesus. With just one prayer, Jesus' heart, heart was moved and granted the prayer of the good thief. And there was Simon of Cyrene who was just, you know, compelled, pushed by the soldiers to help Jesus because Jesus was already at the point of exhaustion and still, well, Simon of Cyrene can actually, um, they can refuse. Uh, Simon of Cyrene can refuse not to carry the cross of Jesus. But maybe he was also touched by how Jesus was so exhausted, was depleted of, of energy, of, of strength. And so he helped Jesus. So sometimes you can also be Simon of Cyrene. Who can help another another stranger, even if you do not know the stranger? So we can be this person. And of course, <clears throat> the person who is the reason why we are celebrating the Holy Week, Jesus Himself. 
let us see the way of the cross. Not, we will not go to the 14 way of the cross. Let's see how the spiritual journey of Jesus was also. Nobody is in Christ in, in his great in his, is in greater crisis than Jesus Himself during the Holy Week. Let let us take a closer look at Jesus. Behold the Son of God. Behold the Man. Behold Jesus Christ. Look at His wounded body and heart. What crisis do you have or experience that Jesus Himself did not undergo or carry upon Himself? Meron ka bang karanasan na palagay mo hindi naranasan ni Jesus? Talking about being locked down and without food. Maybe our quarantine is, is longer because it, it's extended up to, what, 45 days? But you can still go to the groceries. We still, there are still people who can give us, give us food. But Jesus was driven by the spirit into the desert and stay there for 40 days and 40 nights without food. Alone. Oh, not quite alone. Satan was there like coronavirus, wanting to get into Jesus and wanting to infect him. But Jesus cannot be infected because his immunity is very strong. Later we will see why the immunity of Jesus is very strong. That's why the, the virus of Satan was not able to enter into Jesus Christ and was able to, um, to get out from the desert still intact, even if he was hungry for 30 days. Homeless, bakamo, and exiled. Jesus experienced being homeless and exiled. When he was about to be born, Jesus and uh, no Mary and Joseph were looking for a house where they could stay and uh, so that Mary could um, could give birth to Jesus. But no one, no one would would allow them to to enter. Maybe sometimes you are like that. People are trying to knock at our doors because that person might have a a virus, we would not allow the person to enter our home. Jesus, but Jesus was born in, in a manger, where the animals are born. Homeless, exiled, they, at a young age, they, um, Jesus has to be fled to Egypt. So, like OFW didn't Jesus. Afraid and lonely. Remember the agony in the garden when Jesus sweat with blood and cried with blood, tears of blood because of so much fear, afraid. Who would not be afraid if you're going to be, to be crucified, if you're going to be scourged to death, if you will, you will be dying a criminal death, a criminal death. Who would not be afraid? And he was lonely because even the disciples who was with him slept. They can't even be awakened and be with Jesus during the moment of crisis of Jesus. Jesus experienced being afraid to the mass. He even wanted to give up. He even asked God if this, uh, if uh, Lord, if this cup, if I may pass away from this cup or may, may this cup pass, but your will be done and not my will. So Jesus almost gave us up. But he did not give us up because he wants to die for our sake. So I also remember our frontliners here, especially the doctors. They know the danger of being or taking care of the, the patient, especially firsthand when you are face to face with the patient. They have an option to give up, just go home and stay home and be safe. But they opt us to stay, even if it means giving their their very life to them because in giving their life, others will live. So Jesus experienced that also. And our doctors are experiencing that, being afraid and being lonely. Not only the doctors, of course, all, all kinds of frontliners are experiencing being afraid and being lonely. 
being tired, being exhausted. Betrayed and abandoned, your good friend betrayed you with a kiss, and the feeling of abandonment to the point of asking his father himself, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Betrayed and abandoned. Shamed and tortured. You know, when, when Jesus was crucified on the cross, they even stripped him naked. Can you imagine a person on the cross, naked, and crying out for help, crying because he was thirsty. He was shamed. He was tortured. So you cannot say that Jesus will not understand what you are going through if you are mentally tortured or physically tortured or being shamed. Jesus himself experienced it now. Injustice. Barabbas was set free, and Jesus, who was innocent, was the one crucified. Finally, Jesus experienced the death of a criminal. So what crisis do we have or experience that Jesus himself did not undergo or carry upon himself? There was nothing left in the body of Jesus that was not wounded. Where are your wounds? Are your wounds on the head of Jesus crowned with thorns? You have mental struggles? Is your wound in the heart of Jesus pierced with a sharp lance? You have emotional struggles? Are your wounds all over the scourged body of Jesus? Are you experiencing physical pain? In the daily struggles of life, behold Jesus, behold the man, he knows it, he understands, he has experienced all of this. The crisis is a decisive moment, a turning point. And if we focus on the turning point, we might ask, toward where are we turning or toward where are we Returning, we should know where our home is, we should know where we are returning. It is in this non-reactive or what we call the proactive question or contemplation that we may choose to seek opportunities from crisis. This potentiality becomes obscured when we are focused on the loss of the familiar as opposed to venturing into the newness or change. This tipping point is precisely where transformation occurs. Do we gaze into the unfolding potential of change? Or do we focus on the loss of the familiar? Your answer reveals your relationship between loss and opportunity. Ultimately, the question is whether we choose to freeze in the panic of the unfamiliar or we seek to opportunize the new territory that's unfolding for us. What is something new? After this, what will happen? The former presents anxiety and retreat. We already feel depressed if we focus on the loss. The latter evokes growth. Release your hold on loss and embrace your relationship with opportunity. This is from a psychotherapist, Mel Schwartz. And we all know that the only constant thing in the universe is change. What we call crisis is simply the occurrence of change. We are not the masters of change, but if we know where to turn to and where to return to, then we can ride the waves of change and often turn it into opportunity. Where do we turn to or where do we return to? We have God. God with us. Always with us. From crisis to opportunity. A pursuit of meaning. Strengthening our emotional, spiritual, emotional, psychological, and physical immune system. First is develop 
your relationship with God. Pray always. Let God and let go. You know, whenever Jesus would feel uh, weak, would feel that he is in crisis or that feel uh, he is tired, you always go to a deserted uh, place and um, pray to his Father and let let God in his life. Let God let go. Surrender. Next is read and meditate the scripture. Be still. Be still. God reveals himself through the word and speaks in the silence of our heart. We will be able to know the pattern of God in our life if we know the scriptures. If, if we, we would know God better if we read his word in the scripture. Read and meditate. It, this also helps us in our mental wellness. Reading the scriptures. Fast. It does not only detoxify your body, it detoxifies your spirit. You know, when you, uh, you are full and you pray, go, up, go to pray, it will be difficult to pray. You will just sleep in prayer. You fast. It helps you pray better. And it helps you become stronger in body and spirit. Be aware always. Constantly examine your conscience and consciousness. Um, being aware is being alert. Yeah. What is conscience and consciousness? Conscience is um, uh, is something that we know um, if it's in our mind what is right and what is wrong. Sometimes we feel guilty, and in our conscience we know what is right and what is wrong. But being conscious, consciousness is being uh, alert and being aware of what is happening in you. What you do when people don't see you is who you really are. Because God sees you. You never can hide anything from God. To be aware always. Count your blessings and develop a spirit of gratitude and you will realize that everything is a gift. You know, in the convent, whenever we wake up in the morning, the bell rings. No? The bell rings and the prayer leader would say, let us bless the Lord. And even if we are still in our rooms, we would uh, respond, thanks be to God. Because it's a new day. When you wake up and you are still able to wake up in the morning, it's already a blessing. Something to, to be grateful about. Because you know, other people, they don't wake up anymore. When you are still able to breathe, thank God, it's a blessing. Others would need ventilator. Us, we still, we, it's free. We can still breathe on our own. Others would need ventilator, and ventilator is very expensive. And God is giving it, uh, giving it to us for free. When you wake up and you are still with your family, be grateful that they are still alive, you are still together. Be grateful. Count your blessings. Be grateful. Everything is a gift. That's why also the gift is also called present. Be grateful for the present moment. We do not know what will happen tomorrow. So be grateful for what is present because the present is a gift. Develop your relationship with yourself. Love yourself because God created you in his image and likeness, and he loves you. You will not be capable of loving others if you do not love yourself, because you cannot give what others, what you yourself do not have. You should have something first at your hand. You should know how to love yourself first before you can learn how to love other people. Forgive. Forgiveness is, is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for you. It frees and empowers you. You know, when you cannot forgive, the other person has already moved on in life and has, uh, is already happy in life and you are still enslaved by your unforgiveness, by your hurt. So forgive is not for the other person, it's for you. And, if you and maybe you would ask, how many times should you forgive? It's in Matthew 18, 22, 70 times 77 times. It means infinite. Try to forgive. It will really free you. You know where our buhol, our cancer, come from, comes from? It's from that grudge, from, from, those, from those hurt that you are keeping all these years. And the one who offended you already moved on in life. They are now happy and you are still there. Um, enslaved na, na, na hang up ka. Now, that's why we call it a hang-up. 
exercise your body. Breathe, sunbathe, eat, and drink healthy. Suddenly, we become aware of our health because we are afraid of the virus. Take care of the temple of your spirit. Boost your immune system. And it will also boost your mood. And um, you will stay healthy in your relationship with yourself and with others as well. Develop your relationship with others. So if you already learned how to love yourself, then you can already love others. Ask yourself. If you, uh, the way you take care of yourself, the way you love yourself is how you would love others back. And who is my neighbor? Who is the other neighbor? It becomes, an, uh, it doesn't become uh, the other anymore. No? It's the story of the, of the, um, the Samaritan, the good Samaritan. And you know that story, go back to it. So who is my neighbor? So when you are in pain, you don't anymore ask the, the one who will help you. Are you a Samaritan? Are you a Jew? Are you, are you a priest? When you are in need, if you are in need, any help will be, you will be grateful for any help. How to love? It's in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. Love is patient, love is kind, love is forgiving, um, love is not jealous. So review that one. How do we love? Be proactive, positive, and appreciative. Don't be serious about yourself. We are all perfectly imperfect. No one is perfect. Otherwise, we would, need, we would not need God anymore as our Savior. We can already be canonized if you are perfect. If you do, lahat tayo may kanya-kanya racket. Lahat tayo may kanya-kanya discarded. -kanya -kanya so just appreciate the other person. And we are all carrying a burden. The other person you do not know, that, that person is also carrying a burden in his shoulders. That's why sometimes... The person is angry or grouchy, maybe angry about his or her situation or about himself. So just be appreciative, positive, and be proactive, not reactive. Proactive is looking at the situation and seeing what does it, what sense can we make out of the situation? How can we respond to a situation? To respond. No? The ability, the responsibility means the ability to respond. Be respectful in words and deeds. I don't know if it's in the other's life. We are all the same, but also unique. We are all the same. So we are we have to be respectful. And as Saint uh, Pope Francis said, who are we to judge? Learn to say, please, thank you, sorry, excuse me. I love you. Great job. Sometimes we are so we are so uh, madamot in appreciating other people and telling you you've done a great job. Um, you did very well. You're very creative. Sometimes we forget and we, we don't say it. You know when uh, when we only when we see the negative in another person and we are not respectful, it's because uh, we want to look better than them. We point out their their mistake, their negativity. It's because we, we want to look better. Yeah. But be respectful in words and do it and be, be positive. Appreciate and learn from your negative conscious experiences. If you have experienced being rejected, being bullied, being um um what else, being betrayed, don't worry. Hindi naman kayo namatay doon, di ba? It, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, kill you. Actually, it builds your character. They build your character. The negative conscious experiences. Those who are strong in life, they have gone through a lot of difficulties, a lot of trials in life. Those who are weak, those are the persons who are afraid of pain. So, and as the, the athlete would tell us, no pain, no gain. This is where we can be resilient and strong in facing the storm. So we are just, this, this, this crisis will just pass. And it will be, the Filipinos, they, they know all kinds of calamities and we have gone through it and we were able to, to, uh, to survive everything and pass through it with a smile. 
And then maybe I could I could add and develop your relationship with others. Smile. It's very contagious. And it uh, you know, it would help the other people be consoled with your smile. Even if the other people may be angry and if you smile, it will ease their burden. So smile always. Develop your relationship with nature. Suddenly we are now uh, in panic of uh, our environment. And we, now with this pandemic, with the lock up, we go back to what is basic and essential with all the, the modern sciences. We all go back to washing of the hands, you know, of cleaning our rooms. You know what, what, was, what is good in this, uh, in, in this um, quarantine? I was able to clean my room, declutter my room and office and see only what is essential. Difficult to, to keep things which you do not really need or not essential in your life. It, just, it, it, will, it will just accumulate dust and the virus can be there. So go back to what is basic and, and essential in life. Cleanliness keeps the virus away. And we all, there is also a saying, uh, cleanliness is next to godliness. Plant a tree or care uh, or take care of a plant. It is therapeutic. It's the trees, the plants that give us that give us oxygen. So don't kill them, don't don't cut the trees. Otherwise, we will be all needing ventilators. If we cannot, if there are no air, if there is no air anymore, and it's it's actually the trees, the greens, that the, the plants which give us oxygen. Take care of our mother earth, and she will take care of us. You know? Remember the five R's of. Um, uh, the, the reduce reuse of environment of ecology, reduce, reuse, recycle, refuse, wrap, or compost. So let's go back to Holy Week since we are already at the almost Easter season, is the longest season in the liturgical year. It's not Christmas, it's Easter. We are Easter people, you know, people who are alive. So let's go back to the Holy Week. What really happened, especially on Black Saturday? Let's first go back a little bit on Holy Thursday. What happened on Holy Thursday? Remember that last Holy Thursday, we celebrated the Mass of the Last Supper. And sometimes, if it's a normal situation, there would be washing of the feet. On Holy Thursday, this was the time Jesus was explaining to the disciples. He gathered the disciples, explained to them, what will happen on Good Friday? It's sort of a catechesis for them, showing, uh, explaining to them. Because on Good Friday, when Jesus was being nailed on the cross, how can he explain to the disciple what is happening? This is my body, when he cannot even breathe or speak, and when blood is flowing from all, all parts of his body. So he already explained it on Holy Thursday. So it is the ritualization of Good Friday to do this in memory of me. On Good Friday, it fulfills what he, what he taught to the disciples. His body was given for our salvation so that we may live. And he said, do this in memory of me so that in time of crisis, you will remember that I offered my life for you. You will remember that I love you. You will remember that, that, that even if you are unfaithful, I will always be faithful. Remember that when you are in crisis, I, I am there. I will be there. Carrying the cross with me. That's why Jesus is asking us to remember the time of this. So what Jesus did not just leave on, on Holy Saturday, because Good Friday, usually we know that Jesus already died on the cross. So what happens on Good Saturday? You know, Jesus worked still on Holy, on Holy Saturday. He went down to the realm of the dead. Truly, he goes to seek out. The next slide. Truly, he goes to seek out our first parents like a lost sheep. He wishes to visit those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. He goes to free the prisoner Adam and his fellow prisoner Eve from their pain, who is God and Adam's son. So as soon as Jesus died, he went to the realm of the dead and fetched our ancestors who were there trapped, trapped in in what maybe what we call purgatory or wherever they are, up there. And Jesus brought them with his resurrection. Next slide. The Lord goes into them holding his victorious weapon, his cross. Cross. 
When Adam, the first created man, sees him, he strikes his breast in terror and calls out, My Lord be with you all. This is, this is our response to Masna. And Christ in reply says to Adam, And with your spirit. And grasping his hands, he raises him up. Adam, Eve, and all the ancestors, saying, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Next. I am your God, says Lord, who for your sake became your son, who for you and your descendants now speak and command with authority those in prison. Come forth and those in darkness, have light, and those who sleep, rise. So, um, as a way of like a message from, the, from our sister, we would like to share with you um, a video which we made. It's not a profession. It was not professionally made, but it's just way of saying to you all, especially to our frontliners, to all the, those affected by the COVID nineteen, that Jesus is with us always. So fear not. This will all pass. Can we play the video? <laughs> Con la tempesta è caduto il trucco di quegli stereotipi con cui mascheravamo i nostri ego, sempre preoccupati della propria immagine. Ed è rimasta scoperta ancora una volta quella benedetta appartenenza comune alla quale non possiamo sostrarci, l'appartenenza come fratelli. tanto credere che tu esista, ma venire a te e fidarsi di te.
Thank you very much, Irish. Okay, thank you, sister. Before we move on to our question and answer, we will uh, have a few minutes of break, so please stand by. Every coffee needs a lotus. Hi, I'm Mel and I am Choosy. My ultimate skin goal is gusto kong mag-even out ang skin tone ko. Hi, my name is Gian Enwada. My skin goals are to become whiter, fairer, healthier, and younger. It really shows na yung skin ko ngayon mas moisturized, mas glowing, and mas healthy. Thanks to Glutasy, I got my skin tone back. Thank you so much, Glutasy. As COVID-19 cases continue to arise all over the world and enhanced community quarantine stops most of business transactions, struggles such as keeping up with business process, continuing to equip employees to be productive, and complying with government for taxes and financial reporting make it more difficult for an organization to endure the current crisis. But how can you keep up? The answer is flexibility. You don't need to be a superhero to be flexible. Just the right mindset, a lot of hard work, and a powerful tool. Let your business be empowered. Manage your sales, purchases, and inventory online. Unleash the productivity of your employees even if they are at home. Start to have a future-proof business right now. For more details about Q&E Accounting System Online, call us at 0917-710-4722 or email us at sales at qne.com.ph 30% discount will be given as our help to all the businesses within the Philippines. Stay at home and stay safe. What's the secret to beauty's beauty? Langis. Ito ba lahat ang gamit mo? Ay hindi. Isa lang ang gamit ko for all. Moringa O2 Therapy Oil. Hindi lang malunggay. Meron ding olive oil and omega from sunflower oil. This therapy oil helps relieve my dry and irritated skin. It helps lighten my scars and stretch marks. It helps make my hair young and healthy. This is our beauty secret. Sana all. Sana oil. <laughs> Okay, and we're back. Let's uh, wait for Sister Anthony to come back. Okay. Hi, Sister. Hi. So, hawakan ko na lang yung microphone. Better. <laughs> okay na ba? Yes, Sister. Okay. So, just a few reminders lang po sa ating mga uh, viewers and um, FB Live viewers and participants. For your questions, Zoom participants, please type in your questions at the Q&A chat box. For Zoom live questions, please click the raise button to notify the administrator. 
and for Facebook Live viewers, type in your questions on the comment box. So before I move on to the questions, uh, please, and questions rather, I would like to acknowledge first the out-of-town participants that are with us today. They are from Bacolod, Baguio City, Cebu, Davao City, Gapan Nueva Ecija, Iligan City, Olongapo City, Porac, Pampanga, and San Fernando, Pampanga. Thank you for watching us right now. And I would like to greet also my Arriva family. They're watching right now, sister. Hello. Mitch and Kenneth. Yes, and thank you so much for watching. Okay, let's start. So this question is from Jesus. Um, how does faith play a great part in building hope in time of crisis? Yes, because, you know, in time of crisis, um, we can see that not power, not money, not science can help us. We hold on to, to our faith, which is what, whatever religion that is. We believe in uh, the supreme being that someone is there um, being with us, helping us in this in this crisis moment. And, you know, it gives us consolation to know that someone is with us you know, and everything. It's actually, we're already building a community, a uh, spiritual uh, community na yung, um, ang ating, uh, transformation, no? uh, the spiritual transformation that, that, is, uh, that uh, is happening. We have seen that um, it, we, the, we do not need the church buildings to uh, develop our faith. All we need is our personal relationship with God to pray and um, offer prayers for others. It helps a lot. And then meditation. I agree, sister. So for the next question, the question is from Miss Cherry. How can we strengthen one's faith of those who are sick now? Especially they are afraid of COVID-19, even if it's not leading to the same sickness. You know, how can we uh, strengthen them? It's by being with them. If it's not COVID-19, I think they, have, they, they can be with them. No? Mm -hmm. Just a touch, just a gesture of care. And they will already experience God in them, the care of God. We are, in, we are, we are all instruments of God. So by just being with a person, consoling the person, just being there, in, especially at the most difficult and lonely moment, they will already be consoled and they will already have that hope and trust. Okay, for the next question from Sir Ronald, how to deepen, deepen our faith in spite of what's happening around the world due to pandemic crisis? Yeah, I think I've already uh, I've, I've, uh, enumerated there to, to pray, to fast, to meditate on the Word of God because the Word of God also would console us. No? And um, be with other uh, people. Like, like this webinar, just be with other people. Uh, build a support group uh, system. You know, talking about your experiences. Just talking it out already helps a lot. Okay. This, was, this question is uh, very interesting. This is um, from Miss Elma Joy. How would you know if you have a calling, a call to religious life? Wow. Ano na yan, ha? Religious calling, ha? personal crisis, a vocational crisis. Well, you know how, when we are already courageous or brave enough to follow our heart, if our heart tells us that uh, we would uh, like to embrace a religious life, and we already have the courage to embrace, then I believe uh, that you are ready. That, that, because sometimes we are, we are just afraid to follow the, the desire of our heart. If we already have that, and we are always consoled, and the consolation is constant, the, the, uh, the, the desire is constant, whatever happens, I think um, you have the call to the religious life. Okay. Um, question from Jonisho Galvez. How, how to calm down my subordinates in times of crisis like this? Yeah, I think I'd, um, it, it would be good if you would have a, a group sharing session and then uh, initiate an exercise of breathing or even um, organize a prayer activity with the light and the song that would calm the people down. And then, you know, uh, 
what would calm us down is when, when we hear each other share and we know that we are not alone in the boat or in this journey or in this crisis. And then uh, it, would, uh, it would somehow give us peace you know, and consolation. So, and of course, pray. It's always prayer. Okay, always pray. Next question. Um, sister, there's a question about here if you can share the, um, the presentation po to them. Sure. Uh, I, I don't know how to share it, but uh, you would be the one to share it to them. Yes, yes. We'll yes do. Please share us to okay. as many people as you can. Thank you, sister, for allowing us. <clears throat> Next question. Um, how to be strong despite the midst of COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, as I have said, it's what, what do you mean by being strong? Is it physically, emotionally, spiritually? But uh, in, in all the three things, we have to do it in the in the holistic way, no? Physical strength, we need it. We need physical strength, emotional strength by, um, as I, as I have said, by um, exercising, um, meditation, and then prayer, of course, spiritual strength, and uh, maybe if uh, you could also create something that would that could uh, help other people, if even if you are in quarantine, like making a card and sending it to people who need your, your consolation or your assurance of prayers, then that would, I, I think, help you become strong also. Yes, because you somehow uh, it gives you a sense of purpose even amidst uh, this crisis. If you do something for others, like this webinar, it gives us a purpose. Yeah, another question from our Zoom participants. Um, the question is from Ms. Irene. How to enlighten our nurses that chose to back down from the start of crisis, despite encouragement that they have a promise to fulfill. Yeah, I think what are they? Because I've I've read also some some articles that what are they are afraid of is the lack of protective uh, equipment or protective like uh, the mask and the PPE. Mm -hmm. So assuring them that they will be protected, and then I think every time uh, I've seen a St. Luke's that every time they start their work, their work, they really pray together. And then um, seeing things, uh, being ready for what will happen, that whatever happens, um, everything um, happens for a purpose. And it has, uh, it has also meaning in life. Even if we get sick, if it will be uh, for the good of others. And then our life has a purpose. Of course, fear... Fear is always there, but knowing that there is a, a God who is with us always, some uh, somehow comes the fear. No, it's it's really a strong consolation, a strong um, a strong um, uh, garb for us. This prayer. Okay, another question from Miss Elizabeth. The uncertainties during this time of crisis causes a lot of distraction. In strengthening our faith in this regard, what ways can you suggest, sister, so that these destructions won't cause us to weaken our sense of faith? Yeah, uh, you know what? What we uh, how we can do away with distraction is uh, the the exercise of focusing in meditation. Just focus on your breath, and then inhale, exhale, and then it will calm you down and take away distractions and uh, as they said, uh, think positive that this will all pass and repeat it as a mantra that this will all pass. You know? And I think um, it will give you strength and it will calm your heart. Because you know? if we are in constant uh, fear and in constant distress and stress, I think we will uh, be sick. <laughs> we will get more sick if we are preoccupied with a lot of things in our mind. So distress your mind uh, Declutter, declutter also your mind. Okay, question from Sir Charlie. How can we talk about God in time like this? Since from the very beginning, they don't believe in God and be, uh, in God that we believe for. How can we introduce God for those unbelievers in times like this? I think you don't need to preach at this time to preach about God. 
our gesture of kindness, of care, would make them experience that there is a God. No. You in in this moment of crisis, it's not. Uh, it's uh, the way is not to preach about God or faith. It's making them experience the love of God, the peace of God, by uh, showing our care, our love, our peace to other people. Uh, witnessing is is better than preaching. You know, sometimes people. Uh, preach and preach, but they do not walk their talk. So you don't need to, to say anything about God, but just a whole, holding a, a patient's hand, um, saying hi or smiling. Oh, it will already make them see, oh, maybe this person has something greater than uh, uh, that, that uh, something greater than um, that, that he's believing. That is why he can be that strong to even smile amidst crisis. Okay, another question from Maria Janice. You mentioned growth, which one could gain from any crisis situation. What are the concrete fruits of this COVID-19 crisis which lead to our growth as individuals and as community? Okay, first of all, uh, if you notice uh, with this COVID, we are uh, taking care of the earth, of our environment more and more. And with this COVID, a lot of people are going out to help each other. Now, there are a lot of stories which I, which I hear a lot of people um, volunteering to take uh, frontliners from one place to another. These are, this, this is, this is a, a strength for us. And it's make, making us better persons, right? In, instead of just uh, minding about ourselves in the past. We are now taking care of other people, taking care of our environment. No? And I believe uh, after the sana, no? sana, we continue doing this. We continue to take care of each other, to take care of our environment. Next question from Ms. Eileen. Sister Anthony, what advice can you give to our young generation today? What is the best way to, to cope and survive in this in this time of crisis? Our young generation are very creative people. And I see that they are the ones really initiating um, help to others. So I think the, the, the help that we can give the young people is by empowering them of what they are doing. You know, by letting them be creative, putting out the best, bringing out the best in, in the young people of today. They are very. They are multitasking people. They are very creative. Empower them. Empower them. Okay. Empowering youth. Yeah. Next question from Sir Roberto. What is the difference between spirituality to religiosity? Yeah, spirituality. I think. I think it's it's um, a, a deeper faith. It's uh be, being able to to uh, bring out a meaning in a particular situation. While religiosity is a practice of religion, it's as simple as a practice of religion, of piety. While spirituality is being able to see the meaning in different situations, especially in crisis situations. So if you are able to do that, it means you have deep spirituality. Okay. Uh, for the last question, uh, this question is from Maria Sheila. Sister Anthony, how would you explain to the young generation, the millennials nowadays, if they ask why is God allowing this to happen? I think it is difficult for them to understand what's happening since they're not that close with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Some don't have a personal relationship with God. Okay, maybe uh, it, it would be uh, the, the same answer as uh, uh, how do we relate with young people. Why is God allowing this to happen? Because God wants us to use our freedom in a very meaningful way. God wants to empower us. We already know. You know we know about supreme being. We know a lot about, uh, a, a lot about everything. And we have seen also that even science cannot do anything in this. So there is, there might be something greater than science here. So God is allowing this to happen so that we might be allowed also to do what we should do as, the, as a human person, 
the one who whom God has given talents, strength, physical strength, emotional strength. So God is allowing us to do. God is just there. No? But God also gave us freedom. Eh? God has gifted us with freedom. And God is allowing us to use that freedom. This is our chance to use our freedom in a more meaningful way, in a more positive way. Okay. Thank you so much, sister. Any uh, last few words to our participants? Reminder and advices? Yeah. Of, or, uh, thank you very much again to my Ariba family, Irish. Even if... Uh, uh, there are some technical problems because I am really illiterate <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, technically. And uh, keep safe, everyone. And tomorrow is already Easter. Tonight, we will already be celebrating Easter. Because this is the first time that Holy Week is, uh, is celebrated in this manner. But we are, we are one in spirit and love and prayer. And I just want to read uh, my Easter message for everybody. Um, in this moment of our life, when the whole world is experiencing uncertainty, fear, fragility, and death, we hold on to our one and only hope and redemption, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Master. Tomorrow He rises. Yes, He lives. Soon the gloom of this virus will pass away because Jesus has overcome darkness and death. Nothing will take away our hope and faith from the one who is always with us. May the hope, joy, and peace that Easter brings reign in our hearts, in our homes, in our community, and all corners of the earth. Happy Easter to all. Thank you so much, Sister Anthony. I'll see you soon. See you soon, Irish. Take care. Keep well. God bless. Okay, this is not yet the end of our session. Let me first be, uh, acknowledge our win-win partners. We would like to thank the following win-win partners, our official media partner, Art Plus Magazine, Digital Media Partners, Focus Media, Globaltronics, City Advertising Ventures, and Outcom. For our win-win partners, thank you to Brother, Faber Castell, Glutasi, Moringa O2, KFC, Mr. Donut, Tokyo Tokyo, and Lotus Biscoff. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. Please scan this QR code and it will be directed to our Facebook page. It's Arriva Academy Philippines Inc. Facebook page. Again, it's Arriva Academy Philippines Facebook page. Don't forget to like us. For our upcoming online learning sessions, this will be on Monday, How to Be a Strength-Based Parent. Unlock your children's potential by helping them build their strengths. April 13, don't forget to register. We will be inviting Coach Bernard Marquez. What should sales executives be doing to generate sales now and after the lockdown? This will be on Tuesday, April 14. Uh, same time, we have invited an international speaker, Mr. Chris Randall. And Conmarie Method, declutter your space, spark joy in your life. Life. This will be on Wednesday, April 15. We have invited Ms. Renalyn Tan Castellejos, and she is a certified Conmary consultant. On SSS, uh, we have invited a spokesperson Mr. Uh, of SSS, Mr. Joe Mercy Gonzalez. He will be discussing social security system members' assistance on COVID-19 impact. This will be on April 16, Thursday. The dynamics of working from home develop professionalism while working virtually. This will be on Friday, April 17, same time. And we will be um, joined by none other than Ms. Abigail Arenas de Leon, certified image expert. Next, we have better decision making and understanding the global reactions to COVID-19 using neuroscience. We have invited a U.S. Certified Neuroscience Coach, Coach Ben Amphil. This will be on April 20. 
And we would like to invite you in another learning session from our partner, Mr. Paula TB. He will be discussing work mode mindset, leadership lessons employees can learn at this time of crisis. This will be on April 16th, Thursday, 10 a.m. So like him on his Facebook and follow him at Paolo TV. If you want to invite our guest speakers and customize an e-learning session exclusive for your company, don't forget to call me. It's 0916-695-4418. Again, it's 0916-695-4418. Or email me at irish.arivaacademy at gmail.com. And that's it. Thank you so much once again. This is Irish Malanda Samson. In Arriva, it's all about being better. Be safe and stay home. Thank you.